Hi guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge and today we're taking a look at this knife. This is from Y Start. I had a knife that looks very similar to this about a year ago and it was slightly smaller but the same basic shape and uh, it had a satin kind of blade. This is a Damascus blade. Looks a little bit like Damascus steel. It's probably a Damascus steel knockoff. Um, but I've confirmed it is genuine Damascus. And we've got a Kydex sheath, a Kydex uh, scales, liners, a little bit of skeletonization on there. And you can get this exact same knife in a satin model with 440C steel uh, and black, orange, or khaki handle scales. But this Damascus version only has black handle scales. So we're looking at a knife with ball bearings from Y Start. And if you're interested in taking a look at a good knife like this, three and a half inch blade, good size handle for large and extra large hands, and good for medium hands too, for that matter. If you're interested, stick around for the full review coming at you right now. Okay, so the model name for this is the LK50. 1-3 D for Damascus. So this exact same knife, like I said before, with just the satin 440C stainless steel blade, that's just the LK5013. You've got this handle that's got these uh, milled um, ridges on them. Very nice and grippy, but not overly grippy. Feels very good in hand. Uh, the liner lock, it's a little hard to see exactly how far it engages, but it's a little over halfway engaged, but very close to halfway engaged. So you still have a fair bit of life left for this to wear across. Uh, so on this sample, that's a very good thing. You've got a tiny bit of jimping on the uh, liner lock release tab there. That makes it very easy to move it over with your thumb and release it. And. Uh, smooth action from those bearings. Uh, GearBest website, and haven't checked too many other websites, says that it has uh, ceramic ball bearings. I hate to burst their bubble, but it does not. At least this one has steel ball bearings. And why don't I just show you the insides of it right now. You'll see the skeletonizing on the show side liner, and I'll give you a close up of the uh, you know, lockup area and the ball bearings. So take a look at that. So yeah, I think it's very clear that those are stainless steel bearings, but not a bad thing that the bearings work very well. You know, just three years ago, even two years ago, it was rare to see these knives with ball bearings. It was just washers. Um, even a year ago, I think it was sometime in early 2017 that we started seeing, you know, cheap, uh, cheap as in price, low budget knives starting to get ball bearings. and. You know, it was very, very recent in this hobby. If you're very new to the knife hobby, um, you can't imagine the number of changes that have happened just in the last five years. It's been a, a tremendous roller coaster uh, with uh, steel types uh, getting very, very high end steel types these days uh, to, you know, this Damascus. This looks like it's a uh, Dama Steel imposter. I don't believe it. it's Damascus steel, uh, that brand name, but it is a Damascus steel. And you can see if I get, uh, even just using my camera here, I can get it clo zoom close up. You can see the uh, little lines of the layers. And I've got a zoom, a USB microscope. I'll show you a picture of uh, the layers in there right now. You know, it's a Damascus steel. They didn't tell us what the inner core is, and I have not yet found a Y Start website, so that I, and a Y Start, uh, you know, address at all. You buy a Y Start knife, you're not getting warranty from the factory. Uh, you're not getting any, you know, help at all from the factory or anything. You can basically go back to the retailer where you bought it, and that's your only recourse if there's a problem. I've not had very many problems with Y Start knives. I've, uh, y Start knives have been quite good for the most part. This is probably, I haven't kept count, maybe number 10, maybe I've done a dozen of them now. Um, they're, they're decent knives. 
they often come with slightly different uh, hardware than you often see. This one has sort of that uh, piece symbol screw screw head, so it's got like three flats sort of going off on an angle. And uh, then you've got flats for the other screws that don't go all the way through, but you know, I'll show you a close up of one of those. And then we've got Torx here for the uh, pocket clip. Pocket clip is right side tip up only. Uh, by the way, how deep that is, that's over an inch. It's about three centimeters that it sticks out of your pocket, about 1.2 inches. Okay, let's take a look. Here's a uh, pair of jeans that I've mocked up on a wooden block. <laughs> Just for this purpose. They go on there like that. So there you go. Like I said, that's just a little bit over an inch, about three centimeters sticking out. It's not terrible. It seems more than it is when you see it on the pants. It's not that bad. There's only the one side, though. You don't have a pocket clip option on the other side. The lanyard hole is humongous. You can easily fit 550 paracord through there. You've got uh, little hourglass shaped open pillars here for the pillars for the open pillar construction. So one there, one there, and then you've got your pivot. Now your pivot screw is a free spinning pivot screw. And I so dislike free spinning pivot screws. It's not that hard to make them so that they, you know, one side holds and then you just have to unscrew the other side. But no, you need to put a screwdriver, one on each side. And if you've ever tried it, like laying them down, lay down your knife on the table like this, and you take your two screwdrivers and you try to do it, it's crazy because sometimes you slip and whoosh, your screwdriver goes into your other hand or, or worse. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of a video on how I solve that problem. The problem with these freewheeling pivot screws is you need two screwdrivers. So you need a way to hold your knife. I've got a separate video on this clamp, but you need any kind of vice clamp system that holds your knife for you. So you've got two of your hands free this is the only safe way to do it, uh, doing it just in hand. I have sometimes uh, cut myself or stabbed myself. If you try to hold the knife at the same time, it'll slip and you go like that and you stab yourself. So do yourself a favor, get one of these. It will save you frustration, which is a big thing. And you know, you could save yourself a mind, a mild injury as well. And then it's easy enough now to undo these screws and all you have to do is think about undoing the screw and you don't have to think about you know holding on to that very easy that way so there you go and um, I would suggest if you don't have one get one of those vices it really does make a big difference so we've got uh, let's talk about the, the shape of everything here we've got a drop point blade lots of belly good long flat area here nice sharpener's toil We've got this opening here for uh, your thumbs. You can use your thumb deployment this way if you want to. Uh, doesn't reach that well. You've almost got this, you know, cut out here, but that's for your thumb for, for undoing it. It's not for access for uh, deploying the blade. It's for undoing the lock to close the blade. But uh, yes, you can get your thumb in there. You get a little bit of the fat of your meat, of, the, of your thumb, the flesh in there and you can open it that way. Um, and I can even make it flick out. The detent's pretty good. You overcome the detent and then the smooth ball bearings take over from there. Or you can just use the flipper tab. You've got jimping on the flipper tab there. And so if you use the light switch method of pulling back, it works just fine. And even the push down method overcomes and comes flying out. And of course it works just fine with the left hand as well. I grip left-handed so you know, I tend to be not too bad with my left hand, but I am better with knives with my right, for, believe it or not. Okay, so I've talked about the knife there. Uh, handle scales, got this uh, groove down the middle right here, and then other etching. Other than that, they come up smooth with the liners. The liners are fairly thick, uh, but it's not a super heavy knife. It's actually quite light, and the shape of it's quite good. Uh, reverse grip, your thumb goes right along the handle right there and then you've got that nice reverse grip. My hands are large bordering on extra large and it fits right in there. Uh, so it's no problem at all for most guys. You know, if you've got large hands, this knife is a perfect fit for you. 
And for medium hands, it fits okay. And for extra large hands, it's just a little bit small, but not terrible. Uh, with the texture on the handle scales, you can get the pinch grip working quite well because you get a good grip in your hand. So there's a number of different ways to hold this knife. Well, let's do the measurements of this thing. The uh, cutting edge is 8.89 centimeters. That's three and a half inches. The blade length, so tip to the G10 right there, is 8.38 centimeters. That's 3.3 inches. The blade thickness is three millimeters. That's 0.118 inches. The blade depth is 2.35 centimeters. That's 0.924 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, so you got the really shiny part right there, and then you've got the gray. So right where that transition point is, how thick is the steel right there? 0.52 millimeters. That's 0 0.02 inches. That's very, very good. I really like that. That's pretty much perfect for a knife of this size and thickness, uh, everything considered. Uh, my target for a knife like this is to be half a millimeter thick, so 0.52 is almost spot on. Uh, the handle length, so we're talking just all the G10. Handle length is 2.43, whoops, that's the wrong measurement. I'm reading at the wrong spot, 11.65, uh, 4.59 inches. So 11.65 uh, centimeters, very, very good. The grip area, so behind the flipper tab to about the middle of where this screw is because it starts getting round there. Uh, the grip area is about nine centimeters, 3.54 inches. Uh, the handle thickness, not counting any of the pocket clip, is uh, 1.35 centimeters. That's 0.53 inches. So really just over half of an inch thick. Very good, not a problem. And the handle depth, uh, the, thick, the deepest spot is right by this transition, sort of an extra choil back here. Great for that reverse grip, by the way. So right there, 2.43 centimeters, 0.96 of an inch. So almost an inch that way. The total length of this knife when the blade is deployed from tip to tail is 20.05 centimeters. That's 7.89 inches. So basically it's just under eight inches long and it weighs 103 grams, which is 3.65 ounces. So an eight inch knife, uh, well under four ounces. This is a well proportioned knife. Uh, the balance point is, let me put it on my finger right here. There we go. It's a little bit further back than I like it to be. I like to be a tiny bit more forward than that, but it's not bad at all. I like to be right in the center of this twirl, but very good. Uh, the proportions between the blade length and handle length are very good. It's a nice knife for all of those things considered. Well, how much are you going to pay for this? Well, Gearbest has it. Uh, there's not a special on or anything right now. So the retail price, I'll give you the price for this version and the satin 440C version. So. That's a lot of numbers coming at you right now, so pay attention. And I'll give you the satin prices first. So $19.99 for 440C, $26.81 American for Damascus. In Canada, we're talking about $26.01 penny for 440C, $32.89 for the Damascus. In Europe, $16.41 for the satin, $22. Uh, euros even for the Damascus and in the UK it's 14.36 or is it 38? I missed up my notes here. It's one of those two. Uh, pounds sterling and it, the Damascus version is 19.28 pounds. That's not a bad price at all. So we've got a knife that looks good. We've got a nice strong tip here. Uh, the blade comes up very well and we've got a good edge there. Uh, let me zoom back out just a little bit. It looks good. It's a good looking shape. Nice design. Oh by the way there's a little bit of a recess right here with the flesh of your thumb to sit in there. It's a tiny detail but it works you know very well to give you that little bit extra grip and uh, you know, assurance that you're holding it really well in your hand. Uh, by the way, the stop pin is nice and thick as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. Good design, looks good. The sharpener's choil should be just a little bit more forward, a little bit larger. I have resharpened this knife. It did come fairly well sharp. 
Uh, I just happened to use it so much that it needed to be resharpened because uh, it's a fun knife. I was carrying it quite a bit. Uh, good cutting edge to start with from the factory, evenly ground, 20 degrees per side from the factory, and you know, just works very, very well. And of course, right now, it cuts just fine because I've sharpened it. Uh, it's not a it's not a premium steel for sure uh, because it sharpened up uh, fairly easily. They don't tell you exactly what steel it is. I'm estimating it has a Rockwell hardness of around 56, 57, 58, somewhere in that area. Probably a little closer to the 56, 57. Um, so, you know, the center there, maybe that is 440C, I don't know. And then they put the Damascus around it because the uh, satin blade is 440C. It could very well be that. I don't know. I like that their name is on the blade because a lot of Y start knives, it isn't. But I also like that it's not very big and not in your face. But I would have also liked the uh, steel printed on the blade somewhere, like the type of steel that they use to make the Damascus up. Good knife, feels good, looks good, works well, good action, uh, smooth, the detent is good, sucks it in and holds it in. It's not gonna accidentally open up, at least not easily. Uh, you don't really have a bad pocket uh, poker there although it does stick out a little bit, but it's nicely rounded. You've got the chamfering on the edges there, so no sharp edges other than this one, just the way you want it to be. Uh, this is a good entry-level knife. For the price, I say it's a definite buy. If you want something this style, this design, or even if you want the satin version of this, uh, there is no um, build reason uh, to say no to this knife. It's well assembled, other than, you know, you've got that free turning pivot, which is just silliness, but it's not a problem for the knife. Um, you know, it's a good knife. If you're looking for one, I say go for it. If uh, you, well, let me see. I think they could have done the skeletonizing a little bit bigger, made those holes a little bit bigger or used a little bit thinner steel for the liners that could have made it under three and a half ounces that would have been good but that's sort of nitpicky i just think it's a well-made knife for a good price uh, which is which tends to be what y start does they make good budget knives and this is no exception to that so there you go that's this knife if you like this video please give it a thumbs up um, even if you think this video is okay but the knife sucks you know it's the it's the video that you're measuring so give me a thumbs up will you <laughs> Uh, in the comment section, I will try to respond to comments. I'm having a tough, tough time keeping up with that. Um, if you really do need to ask me a question and you want me to definitely pay attention to it, go ahead and make your comment, but then also email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com and I will definitely respond to your emails. Uh, thanks for liking, sharing, and all that other good stuff you guys do for Canadian Cutting Edge. And if there are any of my knives that you would like to purchase, I'm generally open to selling some of them and not because I don't like the knives, just because I need to keep my budget uh, liquid. So until next time, remember, always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.